They said I'd never be back and they were almost right. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Houseplant History. Today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you about Roberto Burley Marks. I've been saying this poor guy's name wrong for the last two years. So it's Burley Marks, not Burl Marks, it's Burley. Marks, Roberto Burley Marks. This guy was freaking sick. So strap on your bootstraps and your other straps. Let's dig in to the wide, wide world of Roberto Burley Marks. Before we jump into everything, please make sure you hit like and subscribe. Maybe you've been binge watching my videos and you just forgot to hit that subscribe button. Welcome to the community. Also, I have YouTube memberships. They're only $5 a month. If you wanna also check that out at the link in the description. So, who was this Roberto Burley Marks? Well, number one, if you're on my channel, you've been hearing me say Burl Marks because I'm a silly little, I'm a silly little plant hobbyist who doesn't know how to say anything. Uh, Roberto Burley Marks was a Brazilian Dude. He was from Brazil and he was born in 1909 on August 4th. Since it's relevant, since we're bringing up birth date, this guy also did kind of recently pass away. He passed away in 1994 on June 4th. He lived a very long time, especially for the time that he was born. Roberto Burley Marx was born in San Paolo. Paolo? I'm so sorry for all the pronun 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 pronunciations in this video. I also do have an actual stutter. So uh, if it's not all peachy keen, I, I apologize. <laughs> so he was the son of his mother, who was Burley Dubé. 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 She was French. And then a Jewish German, Wilhelm Marx. So he was Roberto Burley Marx, took his mother's middle name, and it was it was great time. So the French and the Jewish part are gonna matter a little bit later. After he grew up in Sao Paulo, he and his family moved in 1913 to Rio de Janeiro. In 1928, Roberto Burley Marx went to Germany to go and study fine arts uh, in Germany. He would frequent the botanical garden of Berlin, and that's actually where he fell in love with tropical plants for the first time. Uh, he fell in love and he spent two years, from what I could find, and this was a long time ago, okay? So before computer records in 1928, and then in 1930, he went back to Brazil. So I looked and I could not find a source anywhere that really talked about it. Roberto Burley Marx was half Jewish and half French. He was in Germany studying during a horrible time for Jewish people. So he left in 1930. Germany was under horrifying rule only three years later. Once he was back in Brazil, he attended in 1930 the National School of Fine Arts, which was in Rio. At this school, he made many lifelong friendships that we're gonna talk about a little bit later, kind of. But he made a lot of lifelong friends and also friends that would end up in very powerful positions later in life. In terms of his professional career as an artist, he was described as avant-garde, cubist, and also abstractionalist. In his later life, he was a critically acclaimed landscape artist painter and botanist among other titles. But you guys want to know about the plants, right? Who was Roberto Burley Marx? Why are there so many plants named after this guy? Well, let me tell you. So there are 53. Here's the Here's the photo. There are 53 wonderful, beautiful plants that are named after him. Two of those actually he described. So he half described one with another guy and then he fully discovered one plant on his own. But the rest of those 51 plants, people just named after him because he was such a cool dude. All of these botanist friends, like he would go on these long treks through the, ra the rainforest and the jungle with them and he would find these cool plants. And then these people would like name plants after him and what I discovered too from looking at the names of these plants is a lot of these different botanists name and then you'll see that some of their names correspond to different plants so all these different botanists in Brazil were just like naming plants after each other which I think is kind of cute so a couple plants that you might be familiar with is the philodendron burly marxii which is now known as the philodendron burly marks also there is the philodendron I never know how to say this grazialii grazialii and then also the philodendron 
Dendron Pulchrum. Those are probably some plants that you're familiar with, directly uh, named after him. He actually didn't discover any of those plants. Like he's not credited with the actually description, like describing them himself. The two species he actually did describe himself were Heliconia amygdiana and Philodendron melobaratoanum. This is named after another botanist whose name is Melobarato. Pretty cool. <laughs> Even though there are 53 different plant species out there that have his name on it, actually he only described two of them. And the Mello Baratoanum, he actually described with another botanist. He actually only described by himself the Helconia species. Another reason why this dude was such a big deal was he was one of the first Brazilian conservationists for the rainforests. Uh, the country was kind of just tearing down its jungles and and using them for different tools and materials. And he was super duper against that. He was very outspoken against it. Later in life, because he had friends in high places, he was actually able to do some real conservation work because of his connections that he made in art school. So at some point when he was back in Brazil, he bought this piece of land called Siccio, and then I think he just named it after himself, so Roberto Burley Marx. So Siccio, Roberto Burley Marx, I think. But that's what it's called. All the photos say that on it. And this is a massive garden. It's started out relatively you know modest you guys when I tell you this my man's was living the dream okay he came back from Germany and was like I am doing the most I am going to be the the garden guy my friends are gonna know me as the garden guy okay this is what this guy freaking did at its largest point the Siccio Roberto Burley Marx was 8,600,000 square feet, which is 183 acres, roughly, which is roughly 138 foot ball fields. That is how big this was. I tried to find an actual photo of something that is of similar size and there was some national parks I found, but we're talking this guy had land the size of a national park as his property and he did the most with it. This guy had over 500 different philodendron species in his garden, and that's just the philodendrons. There was palms, his favorite plants were palms, bromeliads. He also really especially favored Brazilian orchids. 183 football fields worth of garden. Here's some photos uh, on the screen. You can see of some drawings of his garden that he did. But basically, one thing that he wanted to do was Brazil's gardening landscape, by the time he kind of became all about plants, was very European gardening styles, and he wanted to do his own thing. He didn't want all these different types of European gardens in Brazil. He wanted Brazilian gardens in Brazil. And so he would go into the rainforest and bring back these plants and his friends would describe them. And then they would try to put them all over everywhere in order to save the plants. And he actually went into the rainforest on many different occasions and just pulled plants out of the freaking rainforest in order to put them in his garden so that they wouldn't get destroyed in the rainforest. That is a whole argument. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a whole other thing, but basically these plants were just being destroyed and were on the verge of extinction. So he went into the rainforest, grabbed a bunch of them out and saved what he could and grew everything in his garden very successfully. So over the course of his life, he had over 3000 landscape projects. One of the most notable being the Copacabana beach of Rio de Janeiro and also the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Brazil. Those are kind of two of the most popular one. You'll know Copacabana beach because of the swirl really cubism style sidewalks everywhere. Very popular and if you've ever been to Brazil you've definitely walked on the pavement that Roberto Burley Marx designed himself. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs was another really big project of his that was one of the most famous uh, that he ever did. So on the website for the International Aeroid Society there's this little email chain that was saved from the 2000s about Burley Marx philodendron. It's really incredible. I mean this is from June 1st 2000. The first question was posted by Don Burns and it was over the past 24 months I've been nursing a short leafless stem about four centimeters of philodendron burly marks. Suddenly over the last six weeks it started growing at a phenomenal pace and now it's about 20 centimeters long. And then basically the rest of the thread is the different people posturing 
which plant it could be, whether it's the Burley Marks Fantasy or if it's the Burley Marks. Um, and then also talking about the Burley Marks Fantasy, this is a really interesting story I wanna end this video on. So don't click away yet. So I found some gossip on the internet on some random Aeroid comment page. I'm talking, I had to click through a couple different Google pages of answers to get to this. This was posted by Gina 1960, April 5th, 2020. So this is relatively recent, literally just over a year ago. Someone asked whether or not Philodendron Burley Marks Fantasy was a hybrid because they couldn't find any information about where the plant came from. I also was trying to find information about where the Burley Marks Fantasy came from because it wasn't on the list of plants I showed you earlier. Gina 1960 responds with, the story goes that this little philo was discovered climbing up a tree in his garden. I'm not sure anyone really knows where it's from. And I was able to actually corroborate this with the Glassbox Tropicals website, which says the same thing. It was found growing in his garden and it's actually an undescribed species. So the philodendron, Burley Marx's fantasy, is literally an undescribed species from Brazil, from Roberto Burley Marx's garden. So hypothetically, if you have a philodendron, Burley Marx's fantasy, it could be a direct descendant from his garden, which is really, really, really cool to think about. Also, Gina goes on to elaborate that she was reading about an Aeroid L forum, which is the same forum I just shared with you before. They say the philodendron Burley Marx's fantasy is actually still after all this time an undescribed species because the only known place it's ever been found was its original discovery in the garden of Roberto Burley Marx. Gina 1960 also goes on to say that it has never ever been collected from the wild and no one who has ever grown it has ever seen it flower. Then they say it was postulated by some that this may not actually be the adult form but instead a juvenile form. Because of the people who have been growing it since the 1960s, it's possible that we would have already seen a metamorphical change. Then Gina 1960 adds in another comment that Roberto reported himself the vague general area where it came from, somewhere around Minas, but no one has ever been able to locate it. So I thought that was really bizarre that, I mean, I thought the Burley Marks fantasy was like this described species. It's everyone's growing it, everyone's selling it, and the price on it's coming down a lot. But how bizarre, it's an undescribed species and I was able again to corroborate this information at least a little bit of it with the Glassbox Tropicals website who says the same thing. So I hope that this video was able to give you some little bit, a little bit of more information about Roberto Burley Marks. Most of his work was really in landscape design and painting. So in terms of the plant stuff, there wasn't that much because that was really a lot of his private life was the plant collecting and the, you know, things like that. So I hope that this gives you a little bit of a background. A lot of people who go to art school and study cubism and also people who study landscape design study Roberto Burley Marks in school. He's an absolutely incredibly significant figure in the art world and also the conservationalist world. So it's pretty incredible that he had his foot in so many different sectors of the world. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it shed some light on Mr. Roberto Burley Marks and I hope that I was able to kind of, you know, I don't know, add something. Maybe tell you something you didn't know about yet. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please make sure you hit like, subscribe, and tweet me at Plant Me Ashley. Let me know what other houseplant history episodes you would like to see. So far we've done Pothos Are Not Pothos, the entire history of houseplant collecting, and now Roberto Burley Marks. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the comment section. Roberto Burley Marks was the most recommended topic I do next for this, which is why I chose it. So if you guys have anyone else you'd like to hear me cover, or maybe a genus or something, I would love to do it. Also, make sure you follow me on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Plant Me Ashley. It's pretty easy. It's literally Plant Me Ashley everywhere. If you want to join my membership, it costs five dollars a month. It is so inexpensive for everything that you get out of it. We actually have 160 channel members now, which is incredible, and it's 160 plant parents who just want to hang out, vibe, and have a good time. I'm actually having a call with my members tonight, and I had one earlier today. So depending on what tier you want to join, you'll get access to more uh, calls and things like that, more benefits. But for the $5 a month, you get access to 160 members of the community. We have a plant tab, obviously, which has an identification, pet, like a pest tab. We have a BST for a bunch of different countries. 
They also have a mental health category, a workout category, and a creative endeavors category, and a bunch of other categories. There's too many to name. But it's literally its own little microcosm of an ecosystem on this Discord. Come hang out, it's amazing. You'll also get a bunch of other YouTube benefits when you join as well. But other than that, thank you so much for uh, vibing with me, hanging out with me, and learning about Roberto Burley Marx. I will just have to see you in the next history book. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you so much for the extra channel support to the planted cauliflower, all the green places, and botanicas.